What's going on guys and welcome to my 200,000 subscriber question and answer video where I answer your questions. Uh, I went over to the YouTube video where I prepared for this video and I also went on Twitter and found some questions that I thought were a little bit more thought provoking and not like very just dead on like about a series or about a certain game or anything like that and I thought I would answer them for you today. Um, so I recently actually passed my 200,000 subscriber goal. Um, and I thought that I would do something special and on top of this video, uh, I know Q&A's are what most people do and they call special. I know this is pretty cool and I like to answer your questions and stuff, but I also want to do a day in the life. Um, now that the weather, as you can tell, it's, this is like literally natural lighting right now, which is insane. I've never had this much natural light and I, uh, with my new room, it's actually really nice. Going down uh, the Cape, if you don't know where the Cape is, it's in Massachusetts, it's like the arm of Massachusetts. And essentially what I usually do down the Cape is I, I go fishing, I go cohogging, I make chowder, I hang out with friends, I go to the beach, I, I just do a lot of outdoor stuff, I go on a boat, I go kayaking, I do a, a ton of stuff. So I wanted to go ahead and make you guys a day in the life of one of those days where I go down the Cape or maybe just the weekend where I usually go down uh, showing things like fishing and all that kind of cool stuff. So I thought I would do that for you guys as well for 200,000 subscribers. I don't know when that will be or how long it'll take me to make that video. I'd say a couple months. I don't know if it'll be like the 250,000 subscriber special um if i do do one for that but it's it's going to be another thing that i'm trying to get to you guys but enough about that let's get on to the questions actually one more thing before i begin the questions uh, about three days ago i hit my two years straight of uh owning and posting this channel uh so i'd like to thank you guys for all your support over any length of time that you have been watching I have not missed a single upload in two years so far. So onwards to three. So question number one is how did you meet Havoc and Ritz? So essentially I met Havoc pretty much when I was born, kind of. Uh, he's actually my cousin, my in real life cousin. I actually live with him now. Um, I live with him, his girlfriend, my old roommate Craig, which is still my roommate, uh, who's my friend from school uh, a while back. We've known each other forever and myself so four of us living in this apartment um i live in the attic it is a finished attic you can kind of see it's actually rather nice it's very roomy i'm kind of still a slob even though i moved in about two weeks ago i need to organize my clothes and i need to vacuum and just get it a little bit more tidied up um i need to fold laundry and i'm really lazy when it comes to that stuff um and i met ritz through actually just emailing him i think it was an email or it was just a a youtube inbox message i was like hey man uh this new update for a game called terraria if you know what that is um is coming out i thought we could play together we were about the same size then i think it was a year and a half ago or so a year and six months year and eight months around there and uh we ended up playing terraria together i i bet if you search parsley royal terraria on youtube it'll come up so the second question is, what is your real life job? So before YouTube, I actually worked in a grocery store called Stop and Shop. Uh, essentially, I was a cashier there. I just beepity booped and I bagged and I just did carts outside. It was really freaking boring. Along with that, I also was a camp counselor at a local YMCA where I was in charge of a group of children. I would think of activities to do, play soccer, go play kickball, arts and crafts and that kind of stuff. And I would watch them in the summer. That was a summer job. Uh, so for about two to three years, I was doing that. Um, I was a cashier for two to three years. And then I was that camp counselor job for about four years, I would say. Uh, this year is the last. Uh, I don't even think the last. No, I'm not actually doing it this year. I'm not actually working the summer this year. I thought I would concentrate on YouTube a lot more. Um, so technically, I am a full-time YouTuber streamer, even though I don't really stream too often anymore. I will get to that later, I think. Um, and yeah, I guess I'm a full-time YouTuber. So question number three is, what do you call your subs? So I never really called my subs anything. Um, I didn't want to put a label on anybody specific. I don't know. I'm not really a big fan of labeling a group of people um a lot of people say loyal royals or um things like that 
And I know everybody goes like to the sub army and like army and soldiers. And, I don't know. I don't. I really just don't like putting a label on a group of people. Um, I don't really know. I would call you guys something if you wanted to, and if you thought of something that was kind of original, but everybody goes the whole army route most of the time, and I don't think that's very original. I don't know. Question number four is, do you have a criminal record? Don't respond if this is too personal. I play video games in my room all day. Will you ever do a face reveal? Next question is, is survival games your favorite game type? If not, say what else? So the way I got into survival games is I like open world running around games where you have no set objective and you have, you can kind of set your own goals, you know what I mean? Um, I really got into survival games when the Daisy mod came out. Uh, I bought Arma 2, I downloaded all of it, Operation Arrowhead, and I downloaded the mod, and I had probably over four or 500 hours in the mod playing with my friends um, and my brother and a bunch of other people. At one point, I actually joined a community of people that were hardcore survival role-playing, and uh, I think that's where pretty much Daisy RP began. I, I really have shied away from Daisy mainly because it's a really hard game to record. Um, it's something where you need to play like six to eight hours just to get two to three videos out of it. Uh, most games that I play now are a lot easier, the more action packed. There's always something going on, so it's a lot easier um, to post a video on those video on, on those games. If I ever did start streaming more regularly again, I definitely would get back into things like Daisy, the Daisy mod, Armor 3, and that kind of stuff, because you have that four, five, six hour span of streaming, and I could highlight it and put it on YouTube for you guys. But yes, I, I, I really do thoroughly enjoy survival games. If I weren't to enjoy survival games, I definitely would just be an FPS fan. The Call of Duties, the Battlefields, the it, pretty much, yeah. The next question is, when did you first start gaming? Uh, I think the first game that I ever played, I don't know if I actually played it in the year it released or anything, um, was Beachhead 2001. I remember um, I was playing Sick one day, and usually when I was younger, when I played Sick, I would go to work with my dad. Uh, my dad, is uh, he owns his own business, and I would go there when I'm sick. Um, and essentially, he sat me down at the computer. He's just like, you want to play a game? I'm just like, sure, I don't care. And then he launched Beachhead 2001, which was probably not the best parenting thing to do, but whatever. Um, it was probably rated M at the time. It was probably rated above M because it had shooting in it. And back in the day, that was like a big no-no. Um, and essentially, you were it was it was World War II style. You sat there on a giant gun, and then people would just run and pop up on your screen and your objective was to shoot them and then when you kill them all you go on to the next level and it get harder and harder as you go. So I probably played that in 2002-2003 on my dad's like 1998 PC like really old shit um, for me at least because I'm only 18 years old that's probably a question down the line and I just answered it but that's fine. Um, and that's probably the first game I ever played so I probably started gaming when I was about six I would say um, and the next game that I got really addicted to was a game called Grail G-R-A-A-L is still up and running today I can't believe it is uh, it's like a 2D uh, side-scrolling game with a bunch of games built in they have something that's similar to World of Warcraft they have something that's similar to nothing I've ever seen before so um, yeah I've been gaming since probably five or six years old I would say and the next question is, will you ever do a face cam? I know I kind of answered a question similar to this, face reveal, face cam, but I think he more thinks on uh, on the actual videos that I usually make, the gaming videos I usually make themselves. Um, the way I look at face cams, I have a view on face cams that some people don't believe in or some people do. I feel like face cams are necessary on games that would invoke facial reaction more than once per minute. Things like Gary's Mod, where I'd be chuckling the whole time, or GTA Online, or which I do plan on playing pretty soon, don't worry. Um, 
and things like that is when like when I'm laughing or when I'm like really scared or like oh my god something's happening all the time then I will probably do face cam videos for those types of games but things like H1Z1 most of the time I'm literally sitting there like this just hands up mouse and keyboard oh my god a zombie click click I don't think it's necessary for me to show my face on those videos um, it also takes up precious screen room which could show and block vision of certain things I, I, that's that's just how I look at it okay so this is a rather long one I'm gonna answer the in three parts it's pretty much three questions so uh, what is your current specs and dream computer right now I actually have a an older setup I think people would say older um, I have a EVGA GTX 780 Ti with an i7 4790K, um, 16 gigs of RAM, etc., etc. You don't really need to know the rest. It's more graphics and CPU. My dream computer is pretty much what every computer geek's dream is, like quad sleeve Titan Zs and four fucking processors and just everything godly in which will cause epic chaos of try. 4k monitors i i don't really don't know whatever the best is i would like you know what i mean so the next question is which channels if any have inspired you to make content so my first youtube channel that i actually subscribed to was scene anners uh back when he did call of duty 5 commentaries um i was a youngin back then um i think it was 13 12 or 13 years old when i actually started making my own videos due to scene enters making these videos i did call of duty commentaries on modern warfare 2 and uh and uh cod 5 it was it was bad it was it was really really bad um what youtubers inspire me today i would say i do watch a lot of frankie on pc and 1080p because his videos are very similar to like survival type videos that i do and he inspires me to really try and take on heavier projects um, more than just my regular let's play videos i haven't even got around to doing any of my heavy projects because i'm been extremely busy lately with in real life stuff i had so many ideas for h1z1 that have just just died with the idea and i think within this year i think i should do something a little bit more extreme like a huge project with a huge collab with a lot more people survival games on seven days to die was a huge one that i let go to waste because i just didn't have a schedule that i could get together to to bring all these youtubers together to actually play now that alpha 11 is actually out i think it would be a lot lot cooler if i could get something like that going i'm doing my q a dog and number three if you could play with any youtubers who would they be I don't really care to play with other YouTubers. I like my core group of people, and we I think we feed off each other very well. Um, I really don't know. If if the if the occasion arose to play with a, a YouTuber that was similar to me that plays survival games, I think I wouldn't really mind playing with them. I, I don't really care. Next question is, what country are you from? I'm from the United States. P.S. I started watching you with the forest series and will it ever come back uh so i'm i am from the united states i'm specifically from massachusetts born and raised i've been here since forever um i was actually born in providence rhode island but i never lived in providence i've lived in massachusetts my whole life that's just the convenience of where the hospital was located when my mom had me so um and when will the forest come back when the forest has a story mode i will be playing it again the next question is, do you miss being a small YouTuber or like being a big YouTuber getting a lot of attention? Um, so, so it really depends on the situation when it comes to attention. Um, I f specifically, when you grow like I did, it's hard to even like comprehend how many people watch you like even the other day sitting in TeamSpeak, i was talking to ritz and i was like wow i already have 500 comments on my 200,000 subscriber q a video and ritz is like you have 200,000 subscribers of course you have 500 comments and i was just like wait oh yeah makes sense kind of so i'm not really like i guess i'm not really full of myself and i'm not really like it's hard to explain um, I do miss being small in the sense that I could play whatever the fuck I want 
and nobody would give a fuck. Uh, that's that's a big part of being small. I could go and play My Little Pony poop adventures. I don't fucking know. Um, and I would get no views on it. But it wouldn't be any different from getting no views on my DayZ video that I played a couple days back. You know what I mean? Um, that's one thing I would say I miss. I mean, I could go ahead and play My Little Pony. My Little Pony. My Little Pony poop adventures and probably still get a shit ton of views on it right now because it's my little pony poop adventures but i would go and play daisy and it wouldn't do well it's it's just it's it's so new to me i would say i've only been doing uh, well this channel for two years a, a lot of other youtubers grew like gradually um over like eight years six years so they gradually got used to the amount of attention I still, in my brain, feel like a 2,000 subscriber YouTube channel, um, but I don't know. It's it's really hard to explain. The next question is, why don't you edit your videos? Why do you leave in parts where you aimlessly walk around? So this comes from a, a multitude of things. Um, I don't edit in the sense of most YouTubers, how they go through and edit a ton of their footage to make it a little bit more entertaining at every point in time. Um, I do actually go through my footage and edit audio streams to make it so I'm louder, uh, game volume is lower, my team speak is a little louder, but it's still a little bit quieter than me, but louder than the game volume. I add the intro, I add the outro, etc., etc. Um, I don't go through and do jump cuts or anything like that, but most YouTubers do. Um, there's pretty much two or three reasons. Uh, one reason is I am playing with a multitude of people. And if I were to edit my videos, I might end up showing something that's in their next part and not in my part. Um, I might spoil one of their videos. Um, I might miss something. There's, there's a whole bunch of things that go into it when you're playing with multiple people. I know there are groups of people that will jump cut, but usually... When you do jump cuts, you're not playing games like like H1Z1. Um, uh, second part of that is my my YouTube channel grew off of unedited videos where people would just watch and kind of watch for the banter and the gameplay, but not really care when there was no gameplay because they would listen to the banter of me and my friends. Um, I actually, about, I'd say three or four months ago when I was about... 180, 160,000 subscribers, um, I went on Twitter and I was like, hey guys, I'm really in between if I need to start editing or not, what would you guys want to see? And 95% of the people that actually answered that said that they would keep enjoying the unedited videos, regardless of them, some of them being more boring than other parts. So, it's just kind of how it works now. I, I like doing unedited videos. Uh, when it comes to something like Gary's Mod or something like that, I'll definitely edit down a little bit more, mainly because I would have my own specific point of view compared to playing with three people in H1Z1 where all our point of views are pretty much similar. Um, so that's just kind of how it works. That's kind of how my YouTube channel works, and that's just how I do it. Next question is, can you give a car tour? Um, I think I'm going to be giving a car tour, which is essentially where I go in my car and I point things out and I drive it down the road, I guess. I, I really don't know. Um, for most people, you wouldn't know if you don't follow me on Twitter. I did recently recently purchase a new car, a 2015 Subaru WRX, um, and I'm enjoying the living fuck out of it. It's a really fun car, um, and maybe I'll do a car vlog in the future or something like that if most of you were interested. What games are you looking forward to if you know if any new games are coming out? I don't know. That was worded weirdly. But um, are you looking forward to any games, pretty much? Um, I'm looking forward to Survive the Nights, which is a open-world zombie multiplayer survival game. It's going to be fucking amazing from what I've seen. I've been in contact with developers, and they say it's coming pretty soon. I, I'm kind of on the down low. I really have no idea when it's coming. Um, but I am seriously, seriously looking forward to it. Um... Black Ops 3, I always look forward to the next Call of Duty, even though I've literally never posted, I've called, I posted one Call of Duty on my, video on my channel, or two actually, Call of Duty videos on my channel, ever. My 10k subscriber Q&A was actually Call of Duty footage, um, and also, I think I did one Call of Duty gun comparison video 
like my third video ever or something like that just because I was just branching out and just throwing videos out left and right and just trying to see what stuck and what I should stick to. Um, other than that, really nothing else. Whatever, whenever the new survival indie game that pops up and I really enjoy it, I'll play it. That's pretty much it. The next question is your favorite subject at school and your most hated subject. So I really, 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 really hated science. Something about science it was just all memorization and it was just stupid. I read biology and chemistry. Oh my god, just never, never again will I ever deal with that shit ever again. So believe it or not, though, my favorite subject was math. I, I liked the fact that you could solve something and it didn't involve too much studying. If you didn't get it, you didn't get it. You know what I mean? You had to go to the teacher, she would teach you. Um, and I like how there was one set answer and not an opinion, which science was pretty much opinion um and memorization and the periodic table just fuck that shit the next questions are actually from twitter and this one is where in the world would you love to travel most and why so i think if i'm gonna travel anywhere next it's one of two places greece or new zealand i really want to go to greece because i am greek uh i'm in greek in origin my last name which is kind of public knowledge but not really it's down low um is full greek it's actually a last name of some of the high priests aka noblemen in greece so i kind of want to go there i want to like retrace my route and just you know hang out it's a really really beautiful country and i would love love to visit greece one day um and also new zealand because my love for lord of the rings wants to bring me to my home in the hobbit holes even though i'm six five but i have big feet so i'm technically a hobbit i think the next question is what do you think was the point where you became a nobody to a somebody? I think he's more thinking along the lines of where my YouTube channel grew the most, I guess. Um, pretty much The Forest was a huge, huge hype train for my channel. Um, H1Z1 was actually a huge, huge, I just punched my mic, huge, huge hype train for my channel. Um, and Seven Days to Die was actually a large hype train for the beginning of my channel. Um, Rust was another huge game for my channel. Um, pretty much, I, th I would say when The Forest came out, I was like, shit, I'm a YouTuber now. I gotta produce content to make all these thousands of people happy, or I'm gonna have a Rito on my hands, aka Riot in Twitch language. Next question is, was YouTube your force? <laughs> The next question is, was YouTube your first choice as a job or just a way to make money and play games at the same time? So when I started YouTube back in, I would say 2009, um, making money on YouTube was blasphemy. It really, the only way to make money on YouTube was through partnerships with companies that made controllers for the Call of Duty YouTubers and, um, YouTube money was not a thing, really. It really was not. Um, when I started doing it more professionally on this channel, which is my, my largest channel and pretty much my only channel now, um, YouTube money was a thing. I really didn't expect to make money. I knew in the back of my head that if I did well enough, this could be a job and it could be a fun job at that. So in the back of my mind, it was like more of a, a motivational kind of thing, more than a like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to make millions of dollars and I'm <laughs> money and shit. No, it was more of a motivational thing for me. I, I more thought like, if I post a video that makes, uh, that makes me $1,000, I'm going to take that $1,000 and throw it back into my equipment and make better videos. Uh, essentially, I've kept that mentality the entire time. I get new headsets all the time. I get new microphones all the time. I get new webcams and new, new televisions all the time. I got I got a new car for God's sake. Um, it, it's it's more it's it was more of a motivation thing for me. Now that it is my full time job, I'm a little bit more less spending, more savvy. So I don't really flash my money or anything like that. I don't have really a ton of money. If you didn't know, we get taxed a fuck ton, which tax season just ended actually yesterday. I paid a lot of money and now I barely have anything, but this is still going to be my job regardless. Um, so it was more of a motivation thing for me. 
if the money wasn't there, I feel like I would still be posting YouTube videos, but I don't think I would be posting them as much, if that makes sense. Also, I left out a piece of that question, was this your first choice of a job? No, I think I answered it earlier when I said I was a camp counselor and a cashier bagger person at a grocery store. Next question is, if you could change one thing on your channel, what would it be? I would probably have to say the editing versus not editing thing. I could probably change that now and not have a problem, but the problem with editing videos is length. And if I post, literally, I'm not even joking, if I post a video that is less than 15 minutes, people get angry. A lot of, a lot of, well, I don't know if they physically, well, I'm going to go punch a wall because Royal posted a 12 minute video. Nothing like that. But it's more like the comment section like, oh my God, a 14 minute video. What happened to your regular 20 minute videos? A 20 minute edited H1Z1 video. I have tried it once. I tried it for about a week, actually. A 20 minute edited action packed, awesome H1Z1 extravaganza is like three hours of gameplay footage. And that is a shit fuck ton of videos if I don't edit it down. Um, so I kind of more wish that I went somewhere else with length more than um, editing. I, I wish I could edit videos and post eight minute, three eight minute videos a day. I know a lot of you in the comments would be like, just do it. Why don't you just do it? I, it's, 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 I might start doing it in the future, but for right now, I want to stick to what I've been doing for a while. Um, but if I could change one thing, I'd say I'd edit and make shorter videos. The next question is, my question is, what is was it like starting out like with equipment and how you got to where you are okay that was weird worded weirdly but kind of understand so when i began i actually used a siberia v2 headset do i even have it i usually have i still have my first headset um essentially it had the shittiest mic ever it's really staticky really quiet really annoying and it had a, a lot, a lot of stupid issues. Um, I had, I still think I had three monitors, but they weren't monitors. They were televisions um, that I had scoured up over two or three years of my mom buying new televisions for her room. Like she bought the new latest smart TV or whatever for her room. And I went and stole her little 22 inch CRT monitor. And I would just have that. Um, I think my first videos were actually 720p stretched to 1080p because my monitors never were 1080p. Um, I know, heaven forbid, there's people in Africa without water and I had a, I'm had complaining about a 720p screen, whatever. Um, but it was, it was a lot harder. It was definitely a lot harder to make videos. I didn't have DX Tori. I was using FRAP still. I didn't have virtual audio cables, which made my audio the worst audio in the existence of YouTube. Um, and just over time, I learned and I purchased and I made smart purchases for certain items that have grown my channel to beyond, beyond what I ever thought it would be. Um, and what kind of made me, I would say, is the amount of quality that I put into my videos, not really in the editing standpoint, but more in the actual quality of the video, um, which has helped grow my channel a lot. Next question is, what do you enjoy the most about doing YouTube as your job? So what I enjoy most is kind of coming off of how much I hated school. Um, I really didn't enjoy school at all. Uh, I loved seeing my friends there. I loved hanging out with my friends. But other than that, school just fucking sucked. I know what kid really does like school. But I hated having a schedule. I hated waking up at 630 and going to bed at 10. I hated coming home from school, having two hours to play video games, and then the rest of my night was studying or doing homework. I really, really just hated not being able to do what I want. So one really cool thing I think about YouTube is, I feel like playing a video game right now, I'm just going to drop what I'm doing and play a video game because I have nothing else to do. I, I don't really have homework. I watch YouTube videos for inspiration on certain games um i i watch twitch streams because i enjoy watching twitch streams i don't really wake up at a certain time and have a schedule i don't have to go somewhere at this time and leave somewhere at this time go to bed at that time 
I really, really enjoy having an open schedule to do whatever the hell I want. That's probably my favorite, favorite part about YouTube. Next question is, why did you decide to base your channel on a survival genre? So I really didn't decide. Uh, I did talk about it a little bit earlier. Um, I kind of just, when my YouTube channel started out, I just started tossing out videos of every game that I enjoyed playing. At the time, I was posting Minecraft videos, Call of Duty videos, DayZ videos. I think I posted a vlog back then of my dog or something stupid. I was just throwing videos out to see what really stuck. And then one day on Kickstarter, a common website for finding new up-and-coming games, board games, cool things like that, um, I actually saw a game called Seven Days to Die, which was a zombie survival game. And I was like, I think I should put this on my YouTube channel. I don't really see why I wouldn't. So that was actually my first series ever that did really well. And that's actually when I started doing my part one giveaway thing. On my part one of that video, I decided that I would give away one of my two copies that I got to the game to one of my viewers. And I was like, that's going to be really cool. Just I should do that from now on. Every part one, I'm going to give away games to you guys. Um, so that's when that started. Um, and it happened to be a stick pretty well, and I gained probably about two to 3,000 subscribers at the time um, off of that game. I had like three or 4,000 subscribers when Seven Days to Die was starting to really slow down and die. So, like any person would think, you think TV shows or anything like that, most people stick to a genre, you know what I mean? Like, if you like reality shows, you pretty much watch a majority of the reality shows. If you really like action movies, you watch action movies. So I was thinking, these three or four thousand people really like things with zombies, first person shooting, guns, crafting, survival, just that kind of stuff. So off of those three to four thousand people, I started playing games like the Daisy Standalone um, and a lot of games that anything had to do with zombies or survival. So, like any good businessman would do, I stuck to a genre because it kind of had that bridge between games. So now I play survival games because my first big break was a survival game. The last question is a really easy one, which actually segues into me talking about Twitch streaming real quick before this video ends. This is the last question. What does ES Games stand for? My name is actually ES Game without the S, but I understand the, the, the S on the end. Um, ES game actually stands for eat sleep game, which is pretty much what I was doing at the time when I created that, that Twitch channel. I actually started on Twitch before I started on YouTube. I remember one day I was streaming Daisy and I got 50 viewers and uh, I had to end the stream early for dinner because my mom made dinner early and I went downstairs to my mom and I'm like, mom, I have 50 people watching me right now, like 50. Like, literally 50 people are watching me drive this bus. I remember the stream. I was driving a bus. I found a bus, repaired a bus. Repairing something back in that game when it first came out when I was streaming it was a huge thing. And 50 viewers was actually, like, a medium-tier streamer back then. So I was like, Mom, I have 50 viewers right now. Can I skip dinner and keep playing this game? And she said no. And it was awful. But... I remember when that happened, I was like, I'm going to be a streamer. And I can't imagine where I would be if I actually stuck to streaming when I started that three years ago, which I started YouTube a year after that. Um, I can't imagine where I would have been, really. I, I, I think about it now, and every time I think about me quitting something, and if I just stuck and persevered through it, how much more successful I would have been in that, that area. Which brings me into why I'm not Twitch streaming right now. Um, I was actually on a, a pretty damn consistent schedule where I would take about three to four days a week and stream for four hours. Um, it kind of brings up a few things that I talked about in this entire question and uh, answer video. One, I don't like schedules. If I'm going to start streaming again, which I do plan on starting to stream again, it won't be on a schedule, unfortunately. It would just be random times, random hours, random amount of hours, two hours to eight hours, who the hell I know, um, where I would just sit down and stream. Um, I mainly stopped streaming, one, because of illness, uh, two, because of illness in the family, three, because of busy work, I, I had taxes, the tax season kind of screwed me over, I had to go to Boston for PAX East, um, I, like I said, I got the stomach flu, I got the regular flu, 
Um, I actually had a cut in my throat for about three days. I got infected. I, it was just a big April was just the beginning of April, the end of March, like middle of March was just a huge freaking mess of just busyness. And it just screwed my Twitch schedule over and I had to keep canceling streams. So I just I got rid of the schedule and I stopped streaming. So pretty soon I do want to start getting back into streaming streaming games that I don't usually post on my YouTube channel. Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Call of Duty, Grand Theft Auto, Arma 3, DayZ, and start doing some highlight videos of that. Um, I do want to get back into it mainly because I do have a subscription now on Twitch. Um, and I, I want to see where I can go on Twitch TV and see if I could become one of those streamers that people really love to watch. Um, but for now, I'm going to work out what's happening with my YouTube channel. And down the line, I will start streaming pretty soon. So other than that, thank you for stopping by my 200,000 subscriber special. Make sure to check back on my channel in uh, probably a couple months if you really want to see that day in the life video. Or just check back in a few hours when I'm posting a whole bunch of gaming videos. Hopefully I answered a lot of you guys' questions. Um, if you had questions that I, I possibly missed, you guys can comment down below any questions. And I'll try to try to answer them more in text based more than in a formal video for you guys. If I really, really missed a question that you really, really want to get answered, I will reply to you if I see it. Um, and I will see you guys in my videos later. Adios.